Hi, my name is Ray with Water Heaters Now, and we installed two 40 gallon atmospheric vent Bradford Whites at this home in northern St. Paul area. And then we combine them together in such a way that they work in tandem. So you have a cold water supply coming in, and this valve actually is a shutoff for both heaters. And then it feeds both of them, and then they both come back out and feed into one single hotline that supplies the house. And if you pipe it in this way, with an equal vertical and an equal horizontal run from each heater, they'll actually work in tandem. And that's the only proper way to pipe them. So what we're going to do at this time is hook up a drain hose to the bottom of the heater, and we're going to pressurize that hose, push out any dirt at the bottom, and then we'll shut off the water supply to the unit and just let it gravity drain, which usually takes about 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to prepare to drain the heater. Before we do that, it's important to shut the gas off. On this Honeywell control that all the Bradford Whites come stock with, there's a black dial and you just turn it to the off position and you can hear the pilot light go off and it's no longer operating. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hook this hose up to the drain. Tighten that up to the O-ring gasket. So now, right now the slot is going sideways, showing that the water's totally off. Now we still have full water pressure to the heater, and we want to blast out any dirt or sediment at the bottom of the heater. So we're going to leave full pressure onto the heater while we open this. Now make sure your hose is secured at the other end of the floor drain, because the water's going to come out pretty ferociously. It might even be a good idea to have somebody else on the other end. So I'm going to go ahead and open this now. And we have water pushing out rapidly and then quickly we're going to turn the valve off on the top of the heater and then after five seconds or less of pushing all the sediment out we're going to go ahead and just shut off the water to the entire heater and let it continue to drain by gravity which usually will take about 30 to 40 minutes and you just walk away and let it drain and uh, then we'll show you how to continue the service from there so now that the heater is totally drained we're going to do what's called a rinsing of the bottom I mean, imagine if you're in your kitchen, you do dishes, and there's a bunch of stuff on the bottom of the sink, and you take your sprayer and you spray around the edges and it goes out the drain, your sink is generally very clean then. Well, water heater is the same way. When you drain it, there might be little bits of minerals and a little bit of dirt composite that came into your house from the city, and it's just sitting at the bottom of your heater. It's empty, and Bradford White has made a way for you to cleanse that. It's called Hydrojet Technology. And what it does, when it hits the bottom of the tank, it swirls it around, pushes it out the drain. So now that it's totally empty, we're going to turn the water on for about three seconds, causing it to swirl at the bottom of the tank. And then we'll turn it off and wait about eight or nine seconds while it completely drains out. We'll repeat that process two or three times. And when you're done, if you were able to put a microscope camera inside, you'd see it's perfectly clean with no debris at the bottom of the tank. We're just going to go ahead and do that one more time. And then turn it off and let it drain. And I can hear the water slowing down already. So now we're at a point where we're ready to turn the valve off to the water heater and go ahead and refill the unit. We close off the drain valve. And we can remove the hose from the bottom. And we're ready to introduce water fully back into the unit and put it back into service. So at that point we can turn the valve back onto the unit, fill it up, which will take about four to five minutes and the whole house will be recharged with water again. Okay, what's left is to turn the gas back onto the unit, so we'll walk through that process now. So we're gonna remove the access panel. There's a sight glass here for us to know exactly when it's lit. So we're gonna take the control knob from hot, from off to pilot. It's the only place that this knob will push in anywhere else on the dial and it won't depress, but at the pilot position it'll push in. That's releasing gas to the pilot. Click that two or three times. And you could actually put your face here to look in the sight glass to make sure that the pilot's running and I can see a nice blue flame in there so the pilot's ready to go. Within 20 seconds you'll hear audible click 
and then a green light will start flashing at this LED. So that would tell us it's ready to go. And then we can move it back into the hot position, which is about 120 degrees. And it fired. If you want your water a little warmer than 120 degrees, every notch from hot to A, from A to B, and B to C, every notch is 10 degrees. Most people are happy at 120, A is 130, B is 140, and C is 150. Now anything over 140 is pretty dangerous for kids for scalding, so you want to keep them safe and probably 120 to 130 will be really comfortable for your showering. Um, that's all there is to lighting a pilot and we'll go ahead and put the cover back on and the heater is back in service. All right, well that's it for how to do your annual maintenance on a Bradford White atmospheric vent water heater. Now right on the sticker it says change your anode rod five years from the date of the install. Uh, there's a whole other video on YouTube where I teach you exactly how to change your anode rod out. Go ahead and check that out. It's the same on atmospheric vent, power vent, or electric water heaters. But take a look at that video and that's why we put unions in so that you'll be able to access that anode rod. Um, so thanks for watching the video and hope you keep things clean in your heater.